Hello everyone and welcome to another new series that I've really been thinking about and that I actually really really wanted to do because you know I love horror movies and I feel like I don't follow enough horror movie channels or like channels that review not just popular movies but just like also like kind of indie ones like random ones on Netflix and then like some that are recommended like by these people like I follow like Ryan Hollinger and Dead Meat and then I follow horror movie timelines and then I think I follow one other channel um <clears throat> sorry that's like horror-esque but they also have a kind of niche like horror movie timelines but yeah um I also wanted to, you know, get my foot in the door and talk about and review some of my favorite horror movies and some movies that are new and give kind of like, not necessarily like like something like super cool, unique hot take, but something that I think is also important because, you know, there's also a lot of people who just want to go see a scary movie once in a while, you know, because they're not necessarily avid, rapid, gory fans like me, but there are people like, oh, you know what, let's go see this one. Because I feel like a lot of people felt that about um, us and then Hereditary in particular because... We didn't get really get to see a lot of um not necessarily the hidden aspects but some of the uh horror tropes and some of the other stuff like that um some of some of these i'll be kind of uh really in depth about then some of them i'll do a really quick one because maybe there's not a lot to the plot like maybe it's just a bad netflix movie or maybe it's just like an indie movie gone awry you know so with that intro out of the way welcome to common horror movie fan reviews and if someone already has his name i'll change it but i feel like this is a pretty solid right now because i don't think that you know my my review is gonna be mind-blowing but it's gonna be something just for for everybody and just to consider if you want to start getting into horror movies because i i for one love them so today's movie is the one that i just saw literally i think like a week or two weeks ago and it's midsummer directed by ari Aster. and this will so for this part it's going to be the non-spoiler review and then i'll i'll let y'all know whenever we're going to get into the spoilers because this movie has a lot to unpack much like uh its predecessor hereditary this one has a lot going on my cat's here also stop stinky stinky man um so the first thing that, okay, so here's how I'll summarize the in, the entirety of the movie, and then I'll kind of give like I'll try to give a few non-spoiler points to what happens and what goes on in it. Um, it's basically, in in its core essence, is a movie about a relationship that's more one-sided that goes very awry and just gets worse and worse as the movie goes on, and. It's very sad to see just like the main character be like, you know, like someone of herself. I think yeah, her name is her name is Danny and I don't remember <laughs> I don't remember any of the, the other um the other cast members, but it's like it's um Danny and then um uh the four her boyfriend and then his three friends. And it's basically just very, very sad to see that just like um as her character goes on, like she really doesn't get any like happier until like towards the end of the movie when you know like those events happen. It's just it's just like I've been at that point as someone who's been who's like who's been in really one-sided relationships. It's just sad, you know, because she doesn't deserve that, and any woman in a relationship that doesn't deserve that. Even your man, non non-binary, non gender non-conforming, just try to recognize the red flags and love yourself a little bit more to not put yourself through that. Okay, now we're gonna get into. Spoiler territory. Okay, wait, I'll give it. I mean, okay. So, if you are not a fan of like slow burn horror movies, I wouldn't go see this one. And I also, although like it's kind of horror adjacent, I don't consider this one a typical horror movie in the sense that it kind of goes along the route of it follows where it's not very. It's that it doesn't follow a lot of common and uh, old. Um, horror movie tropes you know like i mean obviously like we have a damsel in this dress but there's no like there's not a lot of in your face gore and it's more the horror of the realities of us being just people in general you know just like cheating on your partner um uh um like what it follows is like i know there was the metaphor of like oh like the demon is the std you know it's just like these real real wor real world <laughs> horrors Placed in a horror uh, horror movie and is exemplified by what goes on with, between the main characters. Okay, 
Okay, now we're gonna get into spoiler territory. If you don't want to hear about this, if you don't want to hear spoilers, and if you don't want to know about what goes on within the movie, don't click off, go away, or like just wait till the end. Um, I'll put timestamps below as well if if I remember, if my brain is smart enough. So for spoilers, this movie follows the main character Danny after immediately after um, she like in the beginning of the movie or whatever. Like we already kind of see that her and her boyfriend's relationship isn't necessarily the best because she's uh, Danny's calling one of her closest friends and she's like, I feel very needy. Like what if he doesn't want to be with me? And then on the opposite end. Um, Danny's boyfriend is with his friends and he's like, why are you, all of them are like, why are you still with this girl? Like, what the fuck? Like, she's calling you every five minutes. Like, she's really, this, this relationship isn't worth it, basically. They're saying to him. And at that point, um, she calls him and then, uh, she finds out her family, her sister is bipolar and she ended up, uh, having a very bad manic episode and ended up killing, murdering her parents. Now, I did see... I did not, I didn't necessarily read, like, I'm going to this kind of blind. I know I saw a video that basically said that they believe that one of the, uh, one of Danny's boyfriend's friends set up the murder of her family so that, um, later on in the movie, they would all be set up to go to this trip, um, because in, in uh, because the, one of the boyfriend's friends is Swedish and they actually have, like, the Midsummer Festival, like, if you've watched any of, uh, any, like, Swedish YouTubers, usually they have, they have a celebration and they make flower crowns and things like that. Um, and so now we're going to, uh, for some reason, Danny's boyfriend invites Danny to go and then Danny, and then obviously they're all like uncomfortable with her being there, but they also don't mind her presence, I guess, even though they talk shit about her behind her back, which is, which is, you know, it happens in real life also. And then so after this, they go on, um, they go on the plane trip and there's a really interesting transition shot. Um, and then afterwards they are, they are in Sweden and they're in the middle of nowhere, basically, essentially. And they are introduced to the Swedish friends commune life and their like old style rit rit rituals or whatever and it's a very it's um I know Ari Aster based it based it kind of off a uh, a LSD trip because um, at one point the the group takes hallucinogenics and then things are breathing in and out people are panicking everybody's laughing you know it's it's kind of like uh, people are making fun of Danny, but not necessarily because they're all literally high on drugs Doing who knows what and then eventually things get kind of dire where um, Within the rituals, I mean towards the end of the movie we find out basically that the um, The commune has to have a 9 or 11 sacrifices and obviously they um, They use two of the Swedish guys friends two of them and then they do three of the three of the guys that were with the, the Danny's boyfriend's group and then two sacrifices are from the commune because like they willingly sacrifice themselves and uh, the more that the movie goes on the more just like bizarre it gets and the more it's just like you know um, Danny's boyfriend cheats on her with because one of the um, one of the commune members plays a love ball on him and he eating her pubes and he's drinking her pee or whatever and it's 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 just like very insane and then also there's a very weird sexing and and it was full full male nudity and full female nudity in the theaters and i was just like how, how first of all how did he even get that approved because that's like it's very very hard to show male nudity in public in general like usually you have to get the nc-17 rating and this as far as america goes i believe only has the m rating and so that in itself is also very very bizarre but uh towards the end eventually like if you've seen the movie or if you haven't seen the movie and you're here for the spoiler review um towards the end like okay so a lot of in between happens you know everything gets gorier and people start sacrificing themselves and they start doing all these weird rituals and eventually in one of the rituals um danny becomes the uh Forgot. She has, she becomes the, the May Queen or like the Mayflower Queen or whatever and that's basically she's the chosen um, the girl she's the she's the um, the crowning queen of the, the festival of the festivities for that day and then there's a very very unique scene that I really really love and it was very very powerful when you think about it afterwards when I was reflecting on it and when I was looking uh, through reviews and things like that. Um, so if you've seen the movie, there are bits and pieces of lore of basically what happens in the movies and how the rituals go. And if you catch them and like you actually look at them, you'll see that they do happen on the down the movie. And one of them was that um, the May the May Queen, the Mayflower Queen, she is surrounded by the rest of the girls and they are all in sync. 
And so um, when Danny's boyfriend cheats on her with one of the combi members, she goes, uh, she she witnesses it. And then so she runs back to like to the place where they were staying. It's a big old reused barn or whatever. And all of the, uh, the other girls who follow her from the Mayflower uh, Queen activity, they are heaving and crying with her. And it's very, to me, it's a very, very powerful scene because it's like for so long, like for the duration of the movie, like I don't know if it's like months or weeks because it's all very fluid. So you don't really know the time frame of anything. Um, she has just been pent up. She hasn't really cried. She cries, if you've seen earlier in the film, she only cries in private. And so it's just a very like emotional scene. And it's very just like, um, I forgot what's very like, uh, fuck. Now is the time that I need words and I can't even think of anything. But basically it's a very just like, not necessarily awe-inspiring, but it's kind of like a... It's a very relieving sense. It's a very relieving scene in the sense that like, she's actually feeling her emotions for once and she has this support group because if, um, I think, what's his face? Her, the Swedish guy that invites them over um, for the Mayfire, the, the Midsummer Festival uh, by the commune, he basically says that like, he, uh, because for some reason he's like, he like has been flirting with Danny for the entire the trip, so she's also kind of worded out by it because he's never done this before. But he's doing it because he wants her to be the Mayflower Queen because um, the Mayflower Queen gets a sacrifice, and ultimately she sacrifices her boyfriend or her ex-boyfriend at this point. Um, he says basically that when when because his, his his adopted his parents he was adopted by the commune because his parents passed away, so. In that um, he basically says that when within the commune he never felt alone and that they always felt what he was feeling and so they can relate to him on, on a very deep emotional level and uh, Danny eventually experienced that with the Mayflower girls and so she was basically at that point free free of her family free of this man that has been weighing her down and been kind of an asshole to her the entirety of the movie and you, you're kind of just like hell yeah fuck yeah and then at the end um, there's a lot of um, hidden meanings and I'll, and I'll link some stuff below because I don't do it justice, but this is this is just my review. Um, she sacrifices him and she's smiling towards the end of the movie. And it's just like very powerful because she's just like, I'm free of this. I don't give a hell, I don't give a fuck I don't, about anything anymore. I mean, we don't get to see what's going, well, like what happens after, but it's just a powerful and moving scene. And it's just like, yeah, fuck all guys, fuck men, <laughs> you know? But it's just like, I really, really love the ending of that movie, and it, I didn't really know how powerful, how resonant, how much it resonated with us. Like, if you saw some like tweets, whatever, they're like, "Oh yeah, hot girl midsummer," because it's just like Danny and the girls, because she's just so raw and hurt and all these emotions, and they're with her in that moment and that time, and that's beautiful. In the in the beautiful cinematography, beautiful directing, and shout out. To, I don't know if that's Danny's. Uh, I mean, like, I don't know the actor's name. I don't know if that's her first movie, but she killed that role and then like i mean the rest of the cast they they also did a really good job in terms of just like them acting it up by being like creepy weirdos and then just like becoming their character essentially but yeah i thoroughly enjoyed this movie and i recommend you to see it if you want to go sit in the movie theater for a long time because the move the runtime is two hours and seven minutes i believe so it's a very long movie um i think at the time, I think I'm gonna give it an 8 out of 10 only because, sorry, the gore that's in the movie is very, very, very good and the, the SFX and the the regular effects that the crew and team did were stunning, amazing, you know, I just wish like, I, I love the gore factor and so I wanted to see a little bit more of that, you know, a little bit more of like the cult following, what was going on with them and a little bit more things explained because it's just like, did Danny's Swedish friend murder her family? Um, I wanted to see more of just like, what was the sister going through? Like, why did their parents have to die immediately? You know, it was it was a lot of question marks, but uh, but it was a solid film and the cinematography was beautiful. Okay, so now, now we're gonna break down everything. Go In terms of gore, I'm gonna give it a seven out of, seven out of 10 because those, the special effects people, they did what they had to do. In terms of cinematography, the color palettes, how well the shots are fluid, that, that gets a 10 out of 10. Every, that movie is a beautiful movie. And in terms of plot, it also gets, I, I give it a 9 out of 10 because I feel like they could have, one of the selling points was the, um, was one of the, um, 
uh, characters who had facial deformities, and we find out later that he is a product of incest. And he is showcased, I think, in some of the trailers or whatever, to be kind of like a focal point of the movie. He's not a focal point, and so that that kind of sucks. But yeah, gore seven out of yeah seven out of ten. Plot ten out of, no nine out of ten nine out of ten. And then um, cinematography ten out of ten. So yeah. If you've enjoyed this, sorry it's kind of long, but I want to keep doing this because I, I really do love horror movies. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.